Um, and we agree with the barking dog. David Pluff, let me um, ask you, you, you sort of speak to, um, I think, you know, the, the politics are always head and heart. I mean, what, what does the head say about where the race is today? You, you look at um, sort of all the swirl that's out there, talk of the 25th Amendment, these weird videos the president keeps releasing, his, you know, trashing doing anything from behind a computer, which, by the way, is how everyone with the privilege of being able to do things from behind a computer is living their lives. It's how most boys and girls in the school are going to school right now, in large part because of his failures. What, what do you how, how does this all like what buckets does this go into when you look at the state of the race right now? First, Nicole, I agree with Steve. I mean, I don't think it's helpful for Donald Trump that as people are voting and as we're this close to Election Day, you know, there's discussion of the 25th Amendment and whether he's mentally fit to stay in office. But the number uh, that matters here is 270, the number of electoral votes to, to get rid of him, not the 25th Amendment. So back to debates, because I think it's an interesting way to talk about the race. Uh, all three of us have been part of terrible first debates for incumbent presidents. <laughs> so when you bomb your first debate, as George W. Bush did in 04 and as we did in 2012, you want to have another debate uh, to recover your footing and to gain right. back ground that you lost. So Donald Trump's got a debate. If he doesn't, he's waving a white flag because what he needs to do in this race, I don't think he can do it, but when all the undecideds pull soft voters away from Biden, win the turnout war, he's not going to do it by doing videos on the South Lawn where he's a spray tan, drugged up pitch man for Regeneron uh, or through Twitter. He's got to do <laughs> debates so he can reach people. Uh, and of course, he's got to change his routine because if he brings that to Zoom, much less a town hall, it's going to be a disaster. So, um, you know, the polls are where they are. You, polls you, 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 you can't just wait, 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 wait. Stop every a spray tan. Do <laughs> okay. that again. A spray tan. What? A spray tan drugged up pitch man for Regeneron. I mean, it's like a bad prescription drug ad. You'd say it like it's 230. All provable. In the no, it, it, <laughs> you know, I've, I've got my, um, you know, my, my editorial hat on and it is all reportable and provable. We know the drugs he's on. Uh, Tony Fauci talked today about the effects of steroids. The appearance is, is visible to all, even though he'd like us not to believe what we see and hear. And he's acting like a pitch man for this drug. Here's what I always get to, though, with David Pluff when it comes or with Donald Trump, David Pluff. Why? Every time he opens his mouth and talks about coronavirus, his political fortunes plunge. Why is he dug in? Why is he continuing down this path? Well, I think people... Uh uh, with that specificity and specialty in mental health, they'll be examining that for decades because, you, you know, the three of us have worked in politics. Generally, at this time of an election, you know, when people are voting or making decisions about voting, you want to be talking to them about things, uh, you know, that would be a good closing argument that may force them to vote for you. So every time he opens his mouth now or puts out one of these, not just, you know, we make fun of these videos, people are going to die because of these videos because like a third of the country is going to continue not to take it as serious as they can. So for the life of mm -hmm. me, uh, I can't understand his theory of the race. Now, he did admit today that he was a senior citizen. Uh, so clearly his team has convinced him he's in danger with senior citizens. Uh, clearly his team convinced him he's in danger with suburban voters. Now, his, his answer to that is just to say, you know, Joe Biden's going to destroy the suburbs and, you know, black and brown people are going to come live in your neighborhood, um, which is obviously both racist and, and bad politics. So I don't get it. Now, the question is, his campaign, the people who were paid to try and get 270 electoral votes must be pulling their hair out because I guarantee you that thing this morning was not planned. His team knows he needs to do these debates. So I think where yeah. we are, Nicole, is we're either just going to have one on the 22nd uh, or, you know, Trump will somehow with tail between his legs, you know, do the virtual debate. But, you know, now Biden's in the driver's seat. Trump's either got to, you know, basically backtrack from what he said today or we're just going to have one more debate, which, by right. the way, may be what Trump wants. He may say it's easier for me to have one, maybe not good debate, but better debate than the last one than two. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.